right. Looks like oh, we are live. All right, cool. I'm gonna do a little intro theme and we'll jump right into the podcast, okay? Yep, yep. All right. Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fish Nerds, a show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. A show that's always interesting, usually funny, and mostly true. I'm Clay Groves, Chief Executive Fish Nerd, Licensed Fishing Guide, and your best friend. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by the Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting and author of Profit from Your Podcast. We'll do the news, and bigger than that, the Crappy Hippie is here with us with our, with our first true crime segment called Death in the Trinity River. We're going to cash in on the uh, true crime genre in podcasting and make some real money. But let's not ignore our guest, Dave Jackson, the Dave Jackson. Hey, Dave. Hey, Clay. How's it going, buddy? I don't (laughs) don't know. (laughs) It's going fine. I I got a new uh, Roadcaster mixing board. We're going to actually get into how sausage is made today on the podcast. So this is going to be nerdy for people who like the fish nerds and who like podcasting. So it's going to cross over all kinds of genres today. Get our nerd on. Get it on. Get it on. Now, I first met you, Dave, years ago. I was a fan of your show. And then I submitted my show to your podcast review show. And I've been listening to your, every Monday I wake up with you on your school of podcasting. I enjoy that very much. So you've been, you, you're a hall of famer too. Yeah. In uh, 2018, apparently if you don't quit, they let you in the hall of fame. So ah, someday I've been doing it a while and they let me in. So someday the fish nerds will, uh, <laughs> will right. qualify for some kind of prize. <laughs> So anyway, so we're going to start, though. Let's, I want to talk about your book. And one of the funny things about the Fish Nerds, we've been doing this podcast now since 2013, and we have failed uh, on most attempts to make money with our podcast, and mostly because I don't try that hard to make money with the podcast. But you've written a book called Profit From Your Podcast, which is intriguing to people like me who are poor from our podcast. So tell me about your book. It's a book. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is a book. And uh, originally it was called More Podcast Money. And I was getting ready to rewrite it because there were things like Patreon that didn't exist when I wrote the first version of the book. And as I started to rewrite it, I got approached by a publisher that said, hey, you seem to be this like podcast guy. Would you like to write a book about podcast monetization? And I was like, sure. And so it's everything from you know selling your own products to affiliate marketing there's a lot about crowdfunding because everybody was like, how do I make money with Patreon? So I interviewed a few people about that and then how to do ads and they're good ads and bad ads and things of that nature. But uh, some of it is just probably insights from 70 different podcasters on what's working and what's not and things of that nature. So, yeah. And and it's funny because we've tried doing, uh, doing um, affiliate advertising here on the podcast before I've never gotten paid from any of my affiliates, even though I know for sure we've made sales. And so I refuse to do any further affiliate <laughs> marketing. Uh, we, I think Mystery Tackle Box we sold a bunch of and we never got any money from. And uh, I've always kind of like not liked the idea of affiliates because I always feel like they can advertise on every podcast. And they don't spend any money at all until they sell a product. And then, uh, you know, so like I, I can talk about a product over and over again. And then the guy after me closes the deal and he gets paid. So for me, I don't do a lot of affiliate marketing. What am I wrong? Well, it's there are things like Amazon, which I used to get almost a car payment from Amazon. And right when COVID hit, they just decided, hey, we're going to cut everybody's commissions in half because well, we're Amazon, we don't have to care. And so it's you know a cup of coffee now for my affiliate stuff. And I keep hearing how Google is going to somehow do away with cookies. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm pretty sure that's where all the affiliate tracking stuff happens. So I'm kind of like, well, what does that mean for affiliate going through? I've had some success. I had a, a, a podcast about Jillian Michaels, and I started it because Jillian Michaels had a podcast. Uh, she's this trainer from The Biggest Loser. And so she had quit The Biggest Loser. She started a podcast And then she quit her podcast to go back to The Biggest Loser. So everybody was like, well, what happened to The Biggest Loser? Or what happened to Julia Michaels' podcast? So I created one because people were looking for one. 
And it was just like, hey, I'm not Julia Michaels, but you know, I'll talk about what she talks about and things of that nature. And then she put out a book, and it was the first book she'd put out where she actually read her own audiobook. Well, at Audible, if you get a new customer for Audible, you make 15 bucks. It's pretty good. And, yeah. And so I, I went to the, I had a pretty decent audience for that, even though they figured out really quick that I wasn't Jillian Michaels. <laughs> and looked I just like her. <laughs> and I, uh, I said, Hey, this is the first book Jillian has actually narrated herself. If you want to get it for free. And I made a nice little link and that was my first four figure affiliate check. And I was like, well, that's, right, I got to do the count. Four figures is a thousand like dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh it was pretty cool. And it's just, it's hard to, you know, reproduce that. You're like, yeah. Hey, Julie, can you put on another book next week? That, that would be kind of cool. And is she still interesting to people, you know, cause it's such a flash in the pan interest, you know, whether there she's on TV at that point or whatever happens. Yeah. And she had her name on everything. And then she went back, um, but then she quit the biggest loser and came back to do her own podcast. Well, if you can listen to Julian Michaels, talk about Julian Michaels, or you can listen to Dave Jackson. And that was the end of the Julian Michaels podcast. Game, game over. <laughs> so would you say, so crowdfunding you're saying is probably the most common way people make money off their podcast. And that's how the fish nerds make, we make our, our tens of dollars on, on that. But you know, our new, like I bought the Rodecaster Pro, our new re mixing board with money from Patreon. You, Dave, you are a supporter on Patreon. I you bought this for me and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So. Patreon and crowdfunding comes in handy if your product or if your podcast doesn't have a obvious product. So if I'm doing a running podcast, I can sell shoes. If I'm doing a podcast about podcasting, I can sell microphones. But if I'm doing a show that's inspirational stories that uplift people, it's like, like a fishing uh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so it, it's kind of hard and that's where, you know, you can come up with some sort of crowdfunding and the, the thing that most people want is crowdfunding is more of you. Mm -hmm. So there's one uh, podcast, I think it's called El Chapo's House or something like that. It's a political show. And I go into how some people make these elaborate, you know, for $20, I will wash a car and for $10, I will do this. And they have a thing. They just said, it's five bucks. We do four episodes a month, two are free. And two or not. If you want the other two, five bucks. And they're making like one hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars a month. That's insane. I, you know, I'm, I've been thinking about going in that direction because I, I've been. It, it's too complicated to keep track of who got a sticker already and who did I mail a hat to, uh, and it's, it, and you know, if people give you four dollars a month, they'll give you five, no problem. I, I used to have it. You'll love this. This is crazy. I, I had originally set up my Patreon at a dollar an episode. Yep. So four dollars a month, I was getting. And I met in 2018, I met with Patreon at the little booth at uh, Podcast Movement, the year I won my international speaking award, um, award-winning podcast now. Um, and, uh, and I met with them and they recommended, they told me that most people who make any real money on, on Patreon do it on a monthly basis, so X amount of money per month. I took their advice and I lost 75% of my income in one day. And you can't wow. go back. So, because if you said I would give you one dollar an episode, that reverted to one dollar a month instead of four dollars a month, hmm. which is what I was getting. So I lost seventy five percent of my income. I was making six hundred dollars a month, and I went down to whatever one fourth of that. Ouch! Because <laughs> yeah, I it's never come people, back. It's never yeah. come back. See, I always tell people if you're doing the one dollar a month thing, <laughs> at least go to two. Mm -hmm. Because somebody will give you one, will give you two. Right. They might not give you five, but they'll probably give you two. Because when you do one dollar, you're losing a big chunk to all the fees and you know, yeah. all that other stuff. So, yeah, I I canceled my one month. I hit it. I think is what you have to do. You don't cancel it. And so I think my lowest one on the one show I have that has a Patreon is five. Yeah, it's been five is good. I was liking the dollar an episode. That's four a month, and yeah, I had a lot of people giving five dollars an episode. And again, that all crashed and burned <laughs> well and the other thing they wanted in some cases we're using patreon words if you uh pledge a certain amount you get to help shape the content mm -hmm. so like maybe you pick the topic for this i know uh jonathan oaks i talk a lot about him he's a, a patreon wizard and he has he a lot that if you at a certain level you get to pick the topic at the super jumbo deluxe you know uh Trivial Warfare meetup, and then if you are on the Super Jumbo Deluxe level, you actually get to attend that. Like you get to sit at the table. So it's all about access and control. And then there are some people that 
just I just want you to do your art, man. Like here's you know the true patron kind of thing. Well, that's my favorite because I'm not very good at taking direction. I just kind of do what I do, and yeah. I actually barely log on to Patreon, which is a shame. I should get on there more often. So that's the most common way. And then affiliate marketing for people who don't know, that's when like if you sell a you you were doing books for Audible. If you sell Audible, you get paid a certain amount of money. And then we had advertising on the show this winter. We had a shoe company uh, sponsor the show. Uh, from Hawaii, they had these new deck shoes. They sent my wife and I a bunch of shoes and a, a check, and we just had to talk about their shoes every week, and which was delightful. Um, but I, I fail. Here's where I fail, Dave. I fail at calling people up and saying, "Hey, do you want to sponsor my podcast?" Mm. Because yeah, now I've been around long enough. I think if I called called some companies, I would be able to close a deal on some of those. Absolutely. And you just go in the, the statue need typically is how many downloads per episode. Don't Ten. say I get 8 million downloads a month because sponsors aren't stupid. They they know podcasting enough to where, you know, it, it, that's not the true stat. And then if you can, either use a, a Google form or something to get a little bit of demographic about your uh, audience. I know if you look at Spotify stats, because when you sign up to Spotify, you have to put in like your profile. So you can kind of get some demographic stuff from that. And then you copy and paste a couple reviews from apple podcasts like here i am here i have your audience and then what i talk about is you'll get people that are not sure what a podcast is which is hard to believe in 2020 but they're still out there so what you do is you say well it's x amount of money to sponsor the podcast it's x amount of money to sponsor the email list and it's x amount of money to sponsor the website or right now we're running a special you can get all three for the low low price of blank and that's uh how some people do it yeah, that'll be my goal in the fall is actually sell some real advertising on the show with effort because the ones I have sold have come to me, and which is nice. It's just easier, but, yeah. but and I, I think it's time to cash in. The, the people that are really you know making a, a decent wage, it's usually not just ads. It's usually not just you know affiliate. It's not just crowdfunding. It's not don- – it's all of those. Yeah. You know, there are some people that have these mega audiences that are just killing it with ads, but that's – the exception, not the rule. Right. And then you have the dynamic ad insertion that some people are putting on. Now, I, I it's funny because I listen to some podcasts that have dynamic ad insertion. Today, I spent three hours at a radio station where I work editing generic ads that get plugged into radio stuff. They're the exact same ads. I spent three hours editing uh, tampon ads today. And if I hear one more generic <laughs> ad for organic tampons at uh, – at CVS, I, my head's going to explode. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> nice. But, but those could be – and that's the thing with dynamic ad insertion. It could be any ad dropped in the middle of your podcast, out of context. I don't even know if they work. But, no. Well, they, you don't get much. That's right. the other thing is I tested those, mm-hmm. and I'm not making this up. I was getting paid 0. .00, which the last time I checked was zero, but it was zero zero one seven cents per download. Mm-hmm. So I would, I had a show, I was testing it all, and I think I was getting 4,000 downloads an episode and making six bucks. Congratulations. And it was like, that's not going to work for me. And they were all, some of them were interesting because they were geographically targeted. So all of a sudden they'd be talking about a local college or something like that. But, that's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, and kind of spooky in a weird way. Yeah. But it's one of those where that works if you've got, you know, 100,000 downloads an episode. But even that, you could go get a real sponsor and – make a whole lot more. Yeah. Now the fish nerds, we make most of our money from the podcast. through actually people booking on my boat rides or my ice fishing t- trips, uh, which has been kind of crazy to think. And we have people who travel in from across the country because they listen to the show and they go, Oh, I'm going to go fishing with that guy. Uh, and that's been kind of our bread and butter money making for the last year. Or so are there any kind of stories out of the book that, that where people have done some really off the charts in, in, in same work that you in your book? Well, that's, that's a great example of just finding out what your audience wants and gives. And I talk about Daniel J. Lewis, who when he started his podcast, it's called The Audacity to Podcast. Daniel's a web designer, and his reason for starting the show was about giving you the courage to podcast. That's what he meant by audacity. But lucky Daniel, there's also a free software called Audacity. He knew that. <laughs> and everybody thought the podcast was about the free software. And Daniel found out that people that are looking to podcast for free are not looking to spend four figures on a website. So he had the wrong audience for his tool. 
So he just spent time getting to know that audience. Like, well, what do they want? Well, they're trying to get their shows to place in Apple Podcasts. So he created a course for SEO for podcasters and Apple Podcasts. Uh, they, for a while, he was making album art. And then he created eventually uh, my podcast reviews because they were all obsessing over reviews and things of that nature. So he figured out what audience do I have and let me make the product for them. So, and from what I understand is doing pretty well. And he also has podcaster society because there are a lot of people like me that were teaching people how to launch a podcast. Daniel wanted to be kind of like, instead of 101, he wanted to be 201. And so he got the audience and was like, oh, okay, they don't want what I have, but what do they need? And kind of went that route. Yeah, well, it worked for him. That's how I knew him. And so I, I listened to his show and your show for not not before I made a podcast, but ever since I started podcasting, your two shows have been the staples that helped me get this podcast to be a better show. And it still ours. Like still every Monday, I listen to your show. I don't listen to Daniel's as much anymore, but every Monday morning, I hear you talking about stuff, and I go, "Oh, I got to do that thing." But it reminds me. <laughs> and I had things like I used to edit people's podcasts. They still have a few customers that I do that for. But the reason I did that is people joined the school of podcasting and I show you how to edit your podcast in there. But eventually somebody went, you know, uh, I just want to talk into a mic. Do you know anybody that would do this editing thing? And I was like, uh, I guess I could. And that's how I got into the editing thing. So sometimes you kind of jump in and then your audience gives you the idea for, you know, your next product or whatever you want to make. Well, you never know. And so my, my, my favorite show you do though, you do like 20 podcasts, but my favorite one you do, and I, and I love it because it's short is your podcast rodeo show where you, every week you get on a podcast, you listen to a random podcast or one that someone pays you five bucks to do, and you do your first impression of that podcast. And, and so I, I thought it might be fun if we played a little podcast rodeo All today right. and I played a couple of fishing podcasts that I pick randomly and we do the first okay. couple minutes together as a sample of what, is that okay with you? Oh, it's fine. I just, All right, let's see if it, if it takes some notes. <laughs> you need notes. <laughs> let's see if I can do this. So before I restarted my computers and software, I'll edit this part out. Um, this all worked. So I'm not convinced it's going to work now. <laughs> All right. So we're going to pick. So I have to have a, just a, on my iPad, a whole bunch of fishing podcasts. And I'm going to play one and we're going to give our first impression of these podcasts. Okay. 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 Just going to. It takes longer than I thought to pull these up. Let me know if this doesn't play. Because earlier when I was practicing, I hear it in my ears, but I, people listening couldn't hear it. I go to the beginning. It's not working, Dave. <laughs> Live podcast. We'll yeah. edit this. Don't worry. How do you have it plugged into the roadcaster? Oh, I didn't push play yet. Oh. I just I lost my my. Uh, I was so ready to go that I lost place of my stuff here. So I can start again. Fishing podcast. I have it plugged right into it. Got it. Just had that big screen of all the podcasts and it went away. Which was going to be so cool. I was going to be so prepared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me know if you can hear this. This is called This is called the Orvis Fly Fishing Podcast. This is one of the biggest podcasts on the in the fishing world right now. Okay. Right. right. This is a big deal podcast by a real company. Oh, didn't play. <laughs> There we go. Can you hear it? Yeah. Lots of music. Lots of music. And the voiceover starts right. Hi, and welcome to the Orvis Fly Fishing Podcast. This is your host, Tom Rosenbauer. And, uh, Did you hear his name? Did he say Tom Isabella? I couldn't tell. <laughs> it was very whatever it was. Yeah. I couldn't tell. But these guys are professionals. This is big. These guys get paid a lot of money for this podcast. Okay. okay. I'm going to be talking to... I might be jealous. Jay Aylward of Handmade Angler in Massachusetts. And Jay is going to be talking about um, 
largemouth bass fishing um, in general and specifically about catching trophy largemouths. Uh, what time of day do you fish? What flies does he prefer? How does he retrieve the fly? I'm glad he faded that down. Yeah, I was, that was <laughs> way too loud. And, yeah, was, and I'm, the other thing I think it's interesting is his guest is in Massachusetts. <laughs> like, does that matter? I well, it, well, the, actually, it's interesting with fishing. It does matter because if you're talking about targeting fish that region you live in, the yeah. way you fish for them is very, very different. So there you go. It All may right. matter. It may matter to the audience. Okay. okay. So, but you're in Ohio, in case someone wants to know. <laughs> Most of us have close to home. We have a largemouth bass pond somewhere, and although you may not have trophy bass in your local pond, you at least have some some bass to play with. So we haven't done a largemouth podcast in a while. And um, it's uh, America's favorite game fish. So, uh, and you can easily catch them on a fly rod. So, uh, I hope you enjoy the interview. But first, let's do the fly box and try to answer a few questions. Oh. And if you want to ask some questions, you can send me an email. Now, we started this segment called Stump the Fish Nerds back in 2013. I always feel like anyone who does a call in segment stole it from us. <laughs> I was the first ever. No one ever thought about a Colin segment before yeah. the Fish Nerds did it. Yeah, it was you weird that he introduced me an guest email and and a guest. What's that? I said it was weird that he introduced a guest and was like, here's my interview. Oh, but, but first we're going to go to the tackle box or whatever it was. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What was that whole introduction for? Hey, these guys are professionals. Okay. Okay. An email at podcast at orvis.com. You can either just uh, type your question in your email or you can uh, attach a voice file. And um, if I can answer the question, I'll read it on the air. Quick guess, Dave. How many fishing podcasts do you think I listen to besides my own? Three? Zero. Really? Okay. Uh, it's not my genre. No, I like talking about fish, fishing and eating fish, but I don't like talking about how to fish. Mm. To me, that it's sleepy time. It's <laughs> you, you take your reel and you cast it into the water. Well, that's a trick. Fishing isn't hard. <laughs> Every everything you ever do for fishing works. <laughs> so you just have to do it over and over and over again. You do a thousand casts with any lure, you'll catch a fish. There you go. Put the reps in. in. That's right. For the time, man. You get muscles, fishing muscles. And um, if I can answer the question, I'll read it on the air. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the fly box. And the first question is an email from Riley from Corpus Christi, Texas. I've been fly fishing for about two years now. Maybe he should have hired voice actors. <laughs> I was. I thought he died there for a second. I mean, here it is. And do I care that it's an email? Didn't he already say that? He did. Now yeah. it's to me. I mean, you're making a podcast, so like maybe you want them to call it in or record their memo on their phone. Or I, I have done that. People have sent me a really good email. I'm like this is awesome. Wow, what a story. Is there any chance? Because I'm lucky. My audience is podcasters, so I'll just have a microphone. But if they're not, I'll like, hey, I have a voicemail number. Can you call this in? And it won't sound as good, but it's got to be better than me reading it. It is. We do. Um, we used to do uh, Facebook theater. So if I got a lot of Facebook message, messages from somebody, I would have a listener who has a good voice act as the person who sent the messages in and <laughs> give it some theater and read it for us because – we do an audio show. <laughs> That's right. I was acting. Yeah. yeah. I'm a thespian. <laughs> D Texas. I've been fly fishing. Okay, I've had enough. You know, I've never made it through an entire Orvis podcast. <laughs> so this is what I've tried to hear before. Yeah, it was, uh, that was confusing. It's, yeah. it's like me. It's like, hey, Clay Groves is the, the official king of all fish nerds. Today we're going to talk about something really exciting. But first, let's do this other thing. I was like, that was weird. Right. Well, let's do one more here. This one is called Bent. And have you heard of the Meat Eaters? I have not. So the Meat Eater is it's actually the number one outdoor podcast on the internet. And they just released their own podcast called Bent. And uh, this was this actually one I have have heard before. 
but I, I want you to hear and give you your first impression. Well, it's weird that you call it bent because if I, somebody said I'm doing a podcast called Bent. Mm -hmm. I think it's about somebody who is upset. I bent out of shape. Right. Well, my first piece of advice is the word meat meat eater is not in their in their title of their podcast. Now, meat eaters who put this out, and meat eater is the number one outdoor podcast on the internet. So they're not using that as a search term in their title. Mm. Like it, like bent from meat eaters or meat eater presents right, right. bent a fishing podcast. And that would give it the, the juice it needs to sure. to be the top fishing podcast. So this is called Welcome to Bent. This is their first episode. Rocking the blue blockers, the orange bill volunteers <laughs> cap, the whole deal. <laughs> fishing gear shortage not a single rattle trap or vibrax anywhere to be seen the coronavirus is hands down the best thing that ever happened to stripe a surf fishing ever i mean i ain't smiled this much since deep throw was in theaters white deck boots are welcome you will still get served the cheese curds when you walk in sweating and leaking snot after a day on the ice I mean, they have the energy. They have the energy, and they've dropped a bunch of stuff that proves, I'm thinking, because I, I am not much of a fisher person, mm -hmm. but all those, this he's dropping all those terms, and I'm like, I bet those, if I was a fisher person, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, do that, and got the blue blockers and my white boots. <laughs> well, and, and and these guys these guys are longtime podcasters. This is not their first podcast ever. Right. It's their first fishing podcast. They also have good audio the pace is fast, and so they kind of get yeah. that stuff. The Orvis guys are fly fishermen who someone says, "Hey, you want to make a podcast about fly fishing?" You know, so it's different, <laughs> a different <laughs> personality. Yeah. yeah, you want to make people fall asleep. You walk in sweating and leaking snot after a day on the ice. Bent. Good morning, degenerate anglers. Welcome to Bent where we invite fishermen from all walks of life, all skill levels, and all factions to unite. I'm Joe Cermelli. And I'm Miles Nolte. And the way I describe this, for those of you lucky enough to remember such an awesome thing, this is like an, like an eighth grade mixtape about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fishing and, and whatever the hell else we feel like talking about. I'll tell you how I heard about this podcast, Dave. I had listeners hear it and, uh, and tell me about it because... There's only, as far as I could tell, only one other fishing podcast that has a lot of segments in it. Mm -hmm. And these guys are doing a lot of what we're doing at the Fish Nerds, which is not a bad thing because I think we need more good fishing podcasts around. But people, I had people who were listeners who were almost defensive for the Fish Nerds after hearing this. But these guys have a lot more energy than I have. I'm tired already. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing they, they just did without doing it on purpose is you're also defining a little bit like who this is for, who's going to get it. Because mm -hmm. if you say mixtape to somebody who's 22, they're like, what do you mean? Like, right. a, mix, like a playlist? They're making a podcast for the 40 something year old yeah. angler. I mean, that's, and that's, by the way, that's who's listening to the fish nerds almost entirely. It's, there's a handful of women, handful of young people, and a lot of people in their thirties, forties and fifties, mostly men listening to the fish nerds. It's the same audience. So yeah. they, they obviously know who's going to listen. I had a, fan of mine listen and say you should probably quit talking so much about happy days and the waltons and i was like i grew up watching those it's all i got you know, you know I've, I've never seen the waltons <laughs> no, you haven't oh it's great about them they had like I don't know, a gaggle of kids and it was this whole poor family growing up in a mountain and you watch it now and you're like oh my god none of these kids could act their way out of a bag it's a horrible tv show they stop every thursday to watch it well, you know, a lot of those old shows don't hold up. I, I this is kind of a digression, but like Dukes of Hazard, I loved it as a kid. Try watching it tomorrow; it will you'll hate it. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. All right, let's get back to this. We're gonna give yeah. it another minute. Lists now. No, they don't. That's a shame. I don't even know if you can buy blank tapes anymore. Though I Definitely I do remember not. that that my last mixed tape had uh, White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane song, followed huh? by a bunch of No Effects tracks. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Right. I know you're a music guy. What was on your last mixtape? I, dude, I don't, I, if I'm being honest, I don't remember the music that was on it. It was probably no effects or something around there. True story, Dave. My daughter, Sammy, she's 10 years old, found a cassette deck the other day. And she started recording podcasts through the air onto her cassette deck so she can take them with her. 
<laughs> and and music from the radio and she called it a mixtape and she goes dad i made a mixtape and it's it's got all the podcasts she likes the varmint which is her favorite show and then the story pirates and then me playing beatles on the radio and you can hear me talking over the radio like, yeah. awful sound and she's all in on it and <laughs> i'm like i'm like you have an ipod <laughs> you can yeah, yeah. <laughs> she did not she goes this is better you can look i can push record anytime and there you go. Yeah. I dude, I don't I if I'm being honest, I don't remember the music that was on it. It was probably no effects or something around there, but I what I do remember is I had this tape called Forbidden Spanish that was how I learned <laughs> bad words in Spanish, and I would include little snippets of that in between the songs that I recorded onto the mixtapes that I would then give to girls hoping they would laugh and that, <laughs> that you know, them being amused would make them like me. Did it work? Not really, no. No. <laughs> So I would okay. Now, I feel that pain. I did the sim a similar thing with. Jer <laughs> See, I would think now is the time to transition. We had our little fun opening thing. Mm -hmm. like, let's get to some fish stuff. Well, let me ask you this. So, what do you think is more important, personality or content, when making a podcast? Mm, well, that's a good question. Yeah, because because I listen to podcasts and I like the host more yeah. than the content in a lot of areas. But I also want good content. It's got to be – see, I try – if I'm going to do witty banter, mm -hmm. I try to tie it into the content. Or bring it back. Yeah, something to bring it back. So, like, today we're going to talk about such and such and imposter syndrome, and then you tell a story about when you're growing up and you're trying to get up the nerve to kiss so-and-so at the roller rink and you couldn't get it because why would she see anything in you or whatever like that okay that's a tangent but you're still on topic of imposter syndrome now that's true now but you do a solo show which i think is right. harder harder than what i do because I, I can talk to anybody and i can like find the funny in what anyone's saying but doing a solo show it's probably easier to stay on topic than it is when you have a co-host a little bit yeah because there are times i always I do a show on Saturday morning with Jim Collison called Ask the Podcast Coach. And there are times when I will just take a wide left in the middle of nowhere just because it's Saturday, it's 10.30, and I'm tired and I shouldn't be up yet. And it's fun to watch Jim's kind of facial expression as to, okay, we're going to go there. All right. And it's just kind of a long ride. And he'll chime on in. And on occasion, he'll politely just like, well, meanwhile, we were talking about this question. And I was like, oh, yes. Let's get back to where we were. So – it goes back to I'm obsessed with the word right now, interesting. Yes. And I'm trying to just research anything I can to like what defines something being interesting. I think that's it. You go off topic and you're talking about, I don't know, waffles and syrup. As long as it's interesting and you're holding your people's attention, I guess it's okay. It's just I'm always worried about that person that saw the title that said wide mouth bass tips and they're tuning in and we're seven minutes in and we're talking syrup. And I'm like, Hmm. What's that guy gonna think? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting though because I found messing around with my sh with my episode titles. If I put in top five flies for spring trout fishing, that episode will get twice the downloads of the ones where I use the funny like last week. I think it was shark attacks and fish poop or duck poop, and you know, like it was a funny title, but it didn't get the downloads that I would get that if I used that kind of like clickbait teaser title. Even though my clickbait teaser title was the last three minutes of the episode. <laughs> well, I know I did an episode about why well, I interviewed this person and he had a service for podcasters, but it just so happened it was coming out the same weekend that I celebrated Christmas with my, my great nieces and nephew. And one, well, both, I have two nieces and one nephew, and they got, and I'm not making this up, Polaroid cameras. Like they still make Polaroid cameras. In fact, yeah. they repackaged them. And they danced around like it was like somebody just like just gave them a billion dollars. And I'm like, is that a Polaroid camera? And so <laughs> it, that really hit me and it, it kind of threw me uh, for a loop. And I was talking about that and that was what the title of the episode was. I actually went back later and changed it because I was like, that title makes a lot of sense to me, but to the outside world, they have no idea what I'm talking about when I say everything old is new again. True. True, and you have to have that kind of title that works for people. But it's it's a fine line too, because a funny title can be so good, but no one's going to search for it. Like, yeah, like no one's searching for your made up words. I see a lot of fishing podcasts that come out. And I'm not going to play any more podcasts for you, but a lot of fishing podcasts come out where they have made up words for their title, 
and the word fish is nowhere, nowhere on their podcast. And I, I think that they're going to be invisible unless they are Orvis or a big branded show. I had somebody who specializes in helping people pivot from one career to the other. Mm -hmm. And the word pivot was nowhere in the title of their podcast. It was nowhere in any of the titles of the episodes. And her last name wasn't pivot. And she was like, how come when people type in pivot, my podcast doesn't come up? And I'm like, because it's nowhere in your podcast. <laughs> if you don't put it in the title, it's not going to come up. And it's not searching the audio, right? The Google's not... Yeah. yeah, not searching. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Apple doesn't care about it. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's hard to know. Well, good. So your book is more podcast. No, what is it? It's uh, profit from your podcast, and it's pre-sale now on Amazon. I bought it the day it became pre-sale, and it keeps getting pushed back. It, Why, where where the hell's my book? It's September twenty eighth. I was told <laughs> it's our good friend COVID has come back to make more of a headache. So the company that's publishing it originally had it set for i think it was july and then mm -hmm. august and then it got pushed back to september and that's the problem that's killing me is i have awesome people like you that bought the book and now they're getting a thing from amazon saying hey like do you still want this well and if they don't all confirm it that's pretend money that you lost right right so i, I kind of emailed them i go what's going on it's, you know and they're, like, and they're kind of pointing at amazon and I'm not really sure what's going on. It's the first time I've worked with a publisher, and I just, I'm trying to be patient. I'm like, I know COVID, and, and like they said, uh, normally I would have books now to like hand out and give away for free, I guess. But the the person that is in the warehouse that goes through and opens up the case and ships like ten books or whatever, apparently not with the company anymore. I was like, well, I understand that. So, but yeah, from what I understand, September 28th, I sent an email and I was like, I'm, you're making me look stupid. I said, it was my biggest thing. I said, because I told everybody this date and for about a week, it said it released on July 7th, but was out of stock. And I go, well, what's going on? So from what I understand, it's July 28th. Well, hopefully it becomes a big success. You can go on a big virtual book tour and drive in a virtual van from town to town, pretend to meet people. It'll be great. <laughs> That'll be it. It'll be good. All right. So let's introduce the news real quick, and then we'll move on to the next segment of the show here. Here's Fish in the News. Looks like I can push the right button here. Oh, wrong button. Nope, wrong button. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. This is where we pretend the fish in the news happened because we're going to put this in in post-production. This is a podcasting secret here. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. Well, that was great news, Dave, don't you think? <laughs> the best news I've heard in a very long time. The fishiest of all news. Up next, we have John King, the crappy hit hippie, telling us the story of the death on the Trinity River. So stay tuned for that. It should be a lot of fun. That's music for the sake of it, Dave. I just put that in for your own, <laughs> for your own ears. There's no music in that segment. <laughs> I just thought you'd like it. <laughs> uh, I know that's a thing with you. So um, we're going to wrap this podcast up, Dave. I've got a little script up in the messenger section here for you. Yes. Do I read everything after my name? Where it says Dave. Yeah. So, so until next time, and then the next line, Dave, spawn early and often, then I have... It was nice and neat in order, and I cut and pasted it. it yeah, because I was like, huh? Okay. So I turned it to a pair. What's that? So I should say that now? No, I'm going to do a quick read of our closing, and then and then you will do it. I'll do a, I'll do a special thanks, and then I'll, I'll kind of point at you. Okay? Got it. You'll get it. All right. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, Crappy Hippie, for that uh, insightful story of death on the river. So until next time. I got that wrong. Three... <laughs> Dave, I'm good at this. I've been doing this for 256 episodes, and now I'm nervous. All right. So that's it. You've listened to a bunch of fish stories when you should have been fishing. Special thanks to Wally Pleasant for our theme music and Diana's Bath Salts for our news theme. Big fat thanks to the Crappy Hippie. You can go to crappyhippie.com to get his lead-free lures. And the Dave Jackson from the school podcasting.com. So until next time, follow the code of the fish nerds, spawn early and often, never trust a free lunch with strings attached, and swim against the current 
every chance you get. You did it, Dave. You made a podcast. Congratulations. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Let me end this broadcast.